Now on WKRG News 5. We're going to talk about Medicaid and we're going to talk about prisons. And that's all we're going to talk about. Governor Robert Bentley refusing to talk about the sex scandal that's looming over his administration. Another ethics investigation filed in Montgomery, this time about the woman who had an inappropriate relationship with the governor. Plus, an update on a News 5 investigation about how pain pills stolen from local pharmacies are ending up on the streets. And I'm proud to be. And a country music legend has passed away. From WKRG News 5, the Gulf Coast News Leader, the news starts now. Hello everyone, I'm Devin Walsh. Peter Albrecht will join us in just a moment. Thanks for joining us tonight. First on five, several new developments out of Montgomery today. A new ethics investigation has been filed involving the woman that Governor Robert Bentley is accused of having an inappropriate relationship with. And the impeachment process involving the governor is moving forward. News 5's Peter Albrecht is covering the Capitol for Montgomery and he joins us now live. Peter. Devin, impeachment articles were introduced yesterday. Now it looks like a special committee will be formed to look into the allegations against the governor. There were many members of the House who were hesitant to impeach based on news reports about a telephone conversation and the possibility of specific crimes being committed without the Attorney General or the Ethics Commission saying that that's the case. And so it's expected that tomorrow a resolution will be introduced to set up a special House investigation committee to look at the allegations against Governor Bentley. That committee could have public hearings and call witnesses. Witnesses. It's a move that pleases House members reluctant at this time to impeach. Now that it's in the investigative arena, I feel much better. A feisty governor refused to talk about the impeachment at his only public appearance today. I'm going to set some uh, ground rules before we get started with the questions. Uh, we're going to talk about Medicaid and we're going to talk about prisons. And that's all we're going to talk about. So I'm telling you right now, do not ask me anything other than those two things. But he did talk about impeachment this morning at a breakfast meeting with the mayors of the state's five largest cities. He addressed the issue. I mean, he, he was uh, forthright about it. He said he made a mistake. He owned it. He wasn't blaming anybody for it, which we all respected. You could tell from the way he was uh, talking that, you know, he understood that he's made a uh, bad mistake, but that he's going to work through this. But is there enough time to conduct this investigation and then get it to the House floor for a vote of the full House? Victor Gaston says yes. After tomorrow, however, there are only 10 meeting days left in this session. Another development here in Montgomery today, a new ethics complaint, this one against Rebecca Mason, the governor's alleged mistress and former top political aide. State Rep. Johnny Mac Morrow says that... Uh, Mason basically has been waging a vendetta against him because of a bad grade that he gave her 25 years ago when he was teaching an economics class at an Alabama junior college. He says Mason and the governor have been intimidating him and killing his legislation out of pure spite. I think it speaks to the vindictiveness, uh, the, the evilness of, uh, of her and uh, the fact that she would harbor those feelings for 25 years on a, an economics grade that took place uh, in my class 25 years ago. I mean, that's unprecedented. Morrow says that Mason should have been registered as a lobbyist, and he called her the de facto governor. Those are the same words that were used by Fire Delia Director Spencer Collier a couple of weeks ago. So we'll have more on that coming up, and also more on this special committee that will be formed to look into the allegations against the governor. That's coming up at 6 o'clock. For now, though, reporting live in Montgomery, Peter Albrecht, News 5. Thanks, Peter. As we've heard, the governor wants to stay focused on problems that the state is facing, and he is deflecting attention away from the Mason scandal. He says he's very concerned about the budget that will include drastic cuts to Medicaid. News 5's Emily DeVoe is covering the story from Montgomery with more on how these cuts will affect the state. Emily? 
Devin, what this could mean is that the state could lose its federal funding because the new budget is about $85 million short of what the governor says we need to get that federal aid. Now, today in that press conference, they laid out a series of different cuts to the program they might have to do if lawmakers can't come up with the revenue. These include cutting the drug program for adults, that's the largest cut, outpatient dialysis, prosthetics, eyeglasses, and several others. If this brings up a little bit of deja vu for you, it's because it's the same doom and gloom that the governor was talking about last year when legislators wouldn't pass his tax plan. He paints a very scary future without giving any specific solutions for finding that revenue. Now, the Medicaid director who was at the press conference said the cuts would be devastating to Alabamians, but it's a very realistic opportunity. It is a realistic option in that we have to live year to year, and for fiscal year 17, it is clearly a true option that is on the table. Yes, ma'am. Out years, it may lead to greater increased costs, but right now, we've got to survive fiscal year 17. We cannot take the money from the federal government uh, if we can't pay it back. So we're going to have to make some very tough decisions. Coming up at 6 o'clock, we'll talk to a doctor from the University of South Alabama who was here in Montgomery today. He says that if the budget stands as it is, they may have to close their doors. That's coming up tonight at 6 o'clock. Live in Montgomery, Emily DeVoe, News 5. Beautiful skies this afternoon. We'll get a change tomorrow with clear skies, but in between, a little rain. Coming up in the forecast. Plus big wins in Wisconsin for Ted Cruz and Bernie Sanders as the race for the White House tightens up. Later, an update to a News 5 investigation involving prescription drugs stolen from local pharmacies and ending up in the hands of addicts. And as we go to break, it's a windy evening. We're, you're watching News 5, the Gulf Coast News Leader. You're watching WKRG News 5, voted television station of the year by the Alabama Broadcasters Association. Shop Chavez's discontinued and closeout sale this Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. If you haven't been watching News 5 this morning, here's what you're missing. Here are five things you need to know before you head out the door this morning. It's the one that might give you problems if you head this direction. We've been following breaking news all morning long. We do have rain on the way. Jacket and gloves, definitely. We're sliding into a weekend of sunny weather, yeah, you tell yeah. us. I would watch this show if would I were you? not on it. I would. would. I have an ejector seat over there <laughs> that watches me over to here. So tune in and see for yourself. News 5 this morning. Coverage you can count on. Are you happy with your bathroom? I wasn't. But for years, I didn't do anything about it. Like many people, I thought I didn't have the money. Until I learned about the brilliant solution from Bathfitter. Bathfitter puts a new bathtub right over your old one. Isn't that amazing? Bathfitter will measure and make you a new custom bathtub that they install right over your existing one with beautiful matching walls. That means you don't have to rip out your old tub so there's no demolition or ridiculous costs. And they do it all in just one day. That's my favorite part. Plus, you get to choose everything. Book a free consultation and find out for yourself. Here's a before and after photo. This is a gorgeous acrylic tub that fit right over the old one. And only Bathfitter has seamless walls which guarantee a watertight fit. When you change your tub, you change your bathroom, and that can change your life. I know because I did it. Call today or learn more at bathfitternow.com. If you asked Alabama school children to draw what they ate for dinner last night, where would the food have come from? Was anything nutritious? Did it build muscles? Did it strengthen minds? Was the meal enough or was it missed? Across Alabama, one in four children don't always know where their next meal will come from. But together, we're changing that. Join the movement to end child hunger in Alabama because every meal matters. That's memorable, that's me. That's me. me, 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 you gotta see. That's memorable, that's, that's me. me. Me TV. Now for a look at what's making news outside the Gulf Coast. Exit polls from Wisconsin's presidential primary Tuesday show Republican frontrunner Donald Trump did not get his usual advantage from voters who say they're angry about the federal government. Texas Senator Ted Cruz scored 48% of the vote to win the primary easily over Trump. 
Cruz called this victory a turning point in the Republican race. On the Democratic side, Bernie Sanders scored a win in the race. Many said it was too close to call. Sanders coming up with 56 of the 40 of the uh, vote and 48 of the 86 delegates. However, Hillary Clinton continues to hold a commanding lead in the overall delegate count. Up next for the Democrats, a huge primary in New York State where nearly 250 delegates are up for grabs. Money left over from the fight against Ebola will now be used to battle the Zika virus. The Centers for Disease Control will receive close to $600 million to research the virus and the birth defects associated with it. The National Institutes of Health is continuing to search for a vaccine. And I'm proud to be One of the original outlaws of country music, Merle Haggard, died today at his home in California. He had been battling pneumonia for the past several weeks. Haggard recorded dozens of albums and number one hits and wrote more than 700 songs. Merle Haggard died today on his birthday. He was 79 years old. Up next on News 5, the latest on the so-called Peeping Tom suspect accused of taking videos in local women's restrooms. And radar shows across the southeast, wet weather in northern Alabama. We'll get a taste of that. It's coming up in your forecast on News 5. Visit WKRG.com. Voted best news website two years in a row by the Alabama Broadcasters Association. Drive 2016 Civics, the number one selling compact car in America for just $179 a month during Honda's Dream Garage Sales Event at your Gulf South Honda dealers. Casino Resort thinks you deserve something better. Better table games, better slots, better rewards. Discover the Mississippi Gulf Coast Casino that is raising the bar. Join us for our $300,000 Spring Fling in April and May. Win Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays in April. On April 30th, one lucky winner will drive off in a 2016 Buick Cascada Convertible. Sign up for Pearl Rewards in April and win up to $1,000 in free slot play instantly. Scarlet Pearl Casino Resort. We take play seriously. If you have a story you'd like News 5 to investigate, send us an email at news5investigates at wkrg.com and we'll start digging. And now, another episode of Talking Green with Sun South. Now is a great time to get huge savings on all John Deere tractors at Sun South. Like the John Deere 3032E compact tractor, as low as $135 a month. And with quality John Deere tractors, you can get your work done in the yard and on the farm. But hurry into Sunside before these offers disappear. How did you? For quality John Deere equipment, visit Sunside, where it costs less to go green. We've arrived at 2147. Oh my God. This kid's like a baby Hitler. This kid will one day be responsible for billions of deaths. We killed a little Lord Fauntleroy. There's got to be a better way. I could use your help. This isn't about killing. It's about saving. DC's Legends of Tomorrow. Thursday at 7 on the CW55. The man accused of taking cell phone video inside a women's restroom at a local restaurant faces a year in prison and another three months in prison on other criminal surveillance charges. Patrick Heron was sentenced this week. News 5's Allison Spann spoke with the mother of his youngest victim to see if she believes that justice has been served. Can you imagine sending your child to the restroom only to have her come back and tell you that there's a man standing over her stall with a cell phone? That's what one mother experienced at San Miguel Mexican restaurant back in September. We spoke to her shortly after the incident. When I saw a grown man came out, mama, <laughs> mama bear just 
I went into full defense mode and stood in front of him and I said, empty your cell phone or empty your pockets now. What started out as a birthday celebration for her daughter turned into a nightmare. It's been seven months since the incident, but Robin says it still haunts her family today. It robbed us of that security of those private moments and those intimate moments where you take for granted that nobody is watching you, but unfortunately, some people are. Heron's one count of aggravated criminal surveillance is in the case of her now 12-year-old daughter. Mr. Heron did say that he was there to acquire the video for personal gratification, and that actually makes it aggravated criminal surveillance by law. Do you think that justice has been served in this case? I do. I feel like the punishment has, you know, fits the crime in the state of Alabama, um, but I I wish that our state laws were harsher so that the punishment could be a little bit harsher on him. Glass has worked hard to seek justice for her daughter, but now her goal is to change the laws in Alabama. She believes that people like Patrick Heron should have to register as sex offenders. For now, reporting in Mobile, Allison Spann, News 5. And now an update on our continuing coverage of the problems associated with prescription drugs. The investigation into a string of local pharmacy break-ins is expanding tonight. On Monday, we told you about two drugstore burglaries near Pensacola and one in Robertsdale. The three crimes could be tied to pharmacy break-ins in Op Andalusia and in Elba. Well, now Atmore police believe the same suspects burglarized the Byright Pharmacy on Medical Drive Monday. Police believe the suspects behind the break-ins are selling the stolen prescription pills to drug addicts on the black market. News 5's Pat Peterson is live on the Baldwin County Beat. And Pat, prescription painkiller addicts are, are forking out a whole lot of money to feed their addictions. You're right, Devin. Uh, some are paying as much as 50 bucks a pill on the streets. Now, we did talk to a recovering drug addict. His name is John. John agreed to talk to us about his prescription painkiller addiction and how it destroyed his life if we protected his identity. At his lowest point three years ago, John was spending $200 a day to feed his Lortab habit. But John finally asked for help and soon realized many inpatient and outpatient treatment options are affordable. I think it's $150 a week here um, compared to $1,200 I was paying. I mean, that's 10 times more to be out there using than it is to, to get help. Now, for-profit high-end treatment centers obviously cost more. Some charge as much as $20,000 a month, but there is a little bit of good news here. Many health insurance plans now cover drug treatment addiction and will pay 60 to 80% of that treatment cost. Now, we'll have more on the surprising affordability of some of these local drug treatment options tonight at 6. Live on the Baldwin County Beat, Pat Peterson, News 5. Thank you, Pat. The man who police believe was sexting and driving and caused a deadly wreck was sentenced today. Jonathan Raines was convicted of manslaughter in the death of Miranda Hamilton. Raines sent lewd pictures of himself over a dating app moments before his truck hit Hamilton's vehicle head on. The crash happened on Lot Road nearly two years ago. It was the first time in the state of Alabama where texting and driving has been used to charge manslaughter. Today, a judge sentenced Reigns to 10 years in prison, two years to be spent behind bars, and two more years on supervised probation. Neither side wanted to comment following today's sentencing hearing. Now, Alan Seals with First Alert Weather. Hopefully today you had a chance to enjoy our sky textures. We started off with cirrus clouds, and then we picked up some alto cumulus, and then late this afternoon, regular cumulus. Notice how the cumulus are heading northward in that westward view. That means we've got that southerly breeze continuing. And if you go far enough north, you will find some wet weather. Notice across the News 5 area, no rain here, but there are some showers moving from Mississippi into northern Alabama. The tail end of those showers will swing through here tonight. It'll give us a little bit of rain. It's really not going to change these numbers much. In Mobile, we're still running about four inches above average with rainfall this year. Pensacola is running about three inches above average. But when you look at these clouds, you don't have to be a meteorologist to know. They're not rain clouds. They're very small, and there's lots of sunshine on either side. We've got 73 degrees on our Alpha Sky Cam looking eastward with the wind here at News 5 that is calm, although that south wind that most of us have tonight will become a north wind by tomorrow. So that brings a little bit of a change, not a dramatic change, 
By 7 this evening, we'll still be in the upper 60s. You could see an isolated sprinkle, which also means a small chance of seeing a rainbow before the sun goes down. Once the sun goes down, a shower, an isolated thunderstorm, but whatever that is, it is gone by sunrise. We start tomorrow morning with barrels of buttery sunshine. Here's the forecast. As we head toward 11 o'clock this evening, still partly to mostly cloudy, just isolated showers. They'll come in very quickly, head toward the southeast. And by about 3 in the morning, things will be much calmer. And by 7 in the morning, even more calm, which is a good thing for my friends at Dawes Elementary School. That's where I was today speaking to the third grade. I had help from Ty, from Taylor, and Talia. They were all my weather assistants. Now, you know that Dawes Intermediate is on Scott Dairy Loop in Westmobile. These are kids who are super sharp. They get the Allen Seals of Approval. And you know today's topic, lightning. So you know it was electrifying. Thunderous applause. And of course, it was a striking presentation. I'll post that on Facebook in case they miss it. Mid 70s, that's what we get for tomorrow, but the humidity will be down. The reason why, winds will be out of the northwest. And watch this forecast map from midday tomorrow, tomorrow night into Friday, still clear. Friday into Saturday, still clear in that same north wind. What that all means is after our evening sprinkles and showers, we are right back to calm. Here's your forecast for tonight. The sun goes out at 716, a few showers after the sun goes down. Again, most of us are not going to get wet. Our late night temperatures end up in the mid-50s, and even though we are cloudy in the middle of the night, clouds will be cleared away by sunrise. Sunrise, 634, and then we'll have a northwest wind, and that's why you'll enjoy blue skies, mid-70s tomorrow. From tomorrow, as we go into the weekend, just subtle changes in the forecast temperature. On Friday, highs will stay in the lower 70s, but look at Friday night. You want to chill? Friday night, we're into the 40s. Saturday night, we are back into the 40s, and right now, your weekend forecast is super smooth, lower 70s. We move into next week, and by Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, then we'll be back to the pitter-patter of raindrops on the rooftops. Thanks, Alan. Well, have you seen the picture of that huge alligator that was killed in South Florida? It is all over the internet. Take a look. Hunters tracked down this 15 foot long, 780 pound giant at a farm in South Florida over the weekend. The owners of the farm where it was killed say it was in a watering hole and there was evidence it had been feeding on the cattle at the farm. And that's why it is so big. Wow. That gator pictures on the WKRG Facebook fan page and up ahead in the web center, Governor Bentley. Speaking of Facebook, he's made a big change to his official Facebook page and folks online are not happy about it. We're going to show you what's changed and break it down next here on News 5. This is Legal Update with Cunningham Bounds. Welcome to Legal Update. I'm Drexel Gilbert, and today I'm joined by Cunningham Bounds attorneys Billy Bonner and Robert Mitchell. And we are talking about drug use and fatigue in commercial vehicles, and both, Robert, are extremely dangerous. Extremely. According to the U.S. Department of Transportation, driver fatigue is a leading cause of truck crashes. Fatigue can be caused by a number of things, including failure to take required breaks and overuse of cell phones during periods of rest. Interestingly, of the truck drivers who are involved in crashes due to fatigue, 33% also test positive for drug use. So what is the relationship, Billy, between drug use and fatigue? So fatigue and drug use are often related because some truck drivers use illegal drugs in order to stay awake and drive more hours. So how does Cunningham Bounds address the issue of drug use and fatigue in your cases? Well, truck drivers are required to follow the federal motor carrier safety regulations. These are rules that have been put in place to ensure that commercial drivers are acting and driving safely. For example, they require the trucking company to randomly test its drivers for illegal drug use. So if a, truck, a trucking company allows drivers to continue driving after several failed tests, or if they don't screen their drivers at all, that's different than just simple driver fatigue. It really is, and our firm gets to the root cause of crashes. We don't take shortcuts. That's what makes us different. Trucking companies often try to claim that crashes are due to one bad driver. In reality, many crashes are the result of a complete failure in the safety culture at a trucking company. Exposing those failures the way our firm does helps us get you the maximum value of your case. All right, great information on today's legal update.
These creamery shakes are so rich and creamy. Finally, a shake for an aficionado like myself. You're a shake aficionado? Not a shake aficionado. The shake aficionado. Handcrafted, slow-churned creamery shakes are here. This is how you sonic. Shop Chavez's discontinued and closeout sale this Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. In the Web Center tonight, is Governor Bentley hiding from criticism on Facebook? That's what a lot of folks are saying after Bentley's staff made a big change to the governor's official Facebook page. News 5's J.B. Buno joins us live in the Web Center. And, J.B., this all has to do with Facebook comments. Yeah, the governor's uh, official Facebook page, you can't see comments from your fellow Facebookers. And I'm sure a lot of folks out there find it really annoying. So to show you exactly what I'm talking about, let's take a live look here from the Web Center. This is the WKRG Facebook fan page. And this was the Godzilla-sized gator we were just talking about here, Devin. We'll take a look. You can see everyone's comments. I can expand this, and we can take a look at what everyone is saying with this great photo or really any story on the WKRG Facebook page or really any Facebook page in general. But on the governor's page, now take a look at this. Here's the uh, post he made a short time ago talking about prison reform in the state of Alabama. 28 people have commented on this. I'd like to know what people are saying. I click on it, and I can't. Their ghost comments. The only person that can see these comments are Governor Robert Bentley staffers who are in charge of this page. Look, here's another one. Orders National Guard support to protect the U.S. border. Governor from the governor uh, of Alabama. You click on 44 comments, poof, none of them are there. You can't see any comments on the governor's Facebook page, and that's got a lot of folks talking here. Uh, this is a recent change. AL.com uh, was the first to report this, and uh, we were able to confirm it here on his official Facebook fan page. Um, this, of course, all happening around the time that the scandal broke, the news of his scandal broke, and impeachment proceedings started. So, Devin, a lot of folks here if uh, or aren't happy. If you want to comment on the governor's page, you can't. Or, well, you can, but uh, the governor is the only one who can see it. Yeah, it kind of defeats the purpose of social media, where people comment and other comments and other comments. But JB, uh, people can go to our WKRG Facebook fan page, and I know that we have received a lot of comments about this story. More, more than we can count, Devin. We've been talking about the governor for a long time now, and we want to talk about something uh, really cool that's coming up here in a short time. Uh, at 6:30 on the WKRG Facebook fan page, we want you to join us. Uh, WKRG uh, News 5's Emily Devoe and Peter Albrecht are going to be doing a live Facebook chat where people can comment and ask questions and talk about what's going on right now in Montgomery with the governor and Emily and Pete will respond directly to you so get on there the WKRG Facebook fan page at 630 join Pete and Emily it's gonna be a lot of fun a lively discussion uh, exclusively on Facebook all right thank you very much JB well coming up tonight at 6 a man decides to sell a prized possession and instead of meeting an honest buyer runs into trouble with a scammer News 5's Roseanne Haven joins us live for the newsroom to tell us more about tonight's scam busters report that's right Devin you know it was a difficult decision for Randy Spees to part with his autographed picture of Bear Bryant a prized childhood treasure he went ahead and listed it on Craigslist soon after someone contacted him and sent him a check for nine eighteen hundred dollars fourteen hundred dollars more than the asking price calling it a mistake the scammer asked Spees to just deposit the check and send back the overage well that's when he became suspicious hear what mr Spees did and what kind of reaction he got from the scammer it's pretty lively that's coming up tonight at six o'clock all right roseanne see you then and some people will get a little bit of rain tonight a little bit of our audience mm -hmm. is going to get wet most of us we're just dry the evening is quiet it'll be mid 50s later tonight Tonight, and by tomorrow, the clouds will be gone. The low humidity will be back. Oh, perfect. Thanks for joining us. The CBS Evening News is next.